Meatball Guys. What up, guys? This is Meatball Guys. Back here again with another video. Today, we're going to be playing the first 15 minutes of Ninja Gaiden Sigma. The version I'm going to be playing is on the Xbox Series X, and it's part of the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection. The new versions of the game support 60 FPS, not only that, but they support 4K resolution. Now, I did capture and upload this footage in 60 FPS, so everything should look really smooth. Now, fun fact for Achievement Hunters, this is actually the first time where we're able to get achievements in the first Ninja Gaiden. For those of you that don't know, this version of the game, or the original version of the game, sorry, released on the original Xbox. After that, they ended up releasing a Ninja Gaiden Black version, which a lot of people say is the best version of the game. The cool thing about that is Ninja Gaiden Black is actually backwards compatible. I've actually been debating uploading a graphics comparison video comparing Ninja Gaiden Black running in backwards compatibility to this version of Ninja Gaiden Sigma running in the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection. So if you want to see that graphics comparison video, make sure to leave a comment down below letting me know. Other than that, I'm going to be showing you guys the full gameplay of the first mission in the game. It's going to take about 15 minutes or so. Again, it's running in 60 FPS, so I gotta say the game does run really smooth. However, first thing you're probably going to notice is this game doesn't look too updated. So some Ninja Gaiden fans may love that and some Ninja Gaiden fans may have been expecting more in terms of the upgraded graphics and stuff like that. This game still does feel a little old. It also looks a little old, especially in the cutscenes. They didn't remaster the cutscenes or anything like that, so the cutscenes are exactly the same. What it's going to come down to is where you had set your expectations at when you heard about the Master Collection. If you thought you were going to get like a full-on remaster with brand new graphics, brand new textures, and reworkings, you're not really going to get that. This is basically the PS3 ports ported over to the Xbox Series X, running in 60 FPS and 4K. So even though it's 4K, you know, some of the textures don't appear to be 4K textures, if you guys know what I'm saying. So it's 4K, but it's not 4K. I mean, it's going to run on your 4K TV, but these graphics are not going to blow you away by any means. But on the other side of that, I'd say the plus sides are this is the same game that you, you know, played back in the day. So it's going to feel the same. It's going to strike the same nostalgia that you have for the game if you owned it on the original Xbox or maybe even played the Ninja Gaiden Sigma version on the PS3. Either way, it's actually a lot of fun to play, and this is one of the best Ninja Gaiden games. Personally, I like Ninja Gaiden 2, specifically the Xbox 360 version, a lot more. That has to be my favorite one. I'll be talking a bit about that one in the gameplay for Ninja Gaiden 2 Sigma. So yeah, if you're wondering if I'm going to be uploading gameplay for the other two games, Yes, indeed, I am. I'm going to be uploading the first 15 or 20 minutes or so for each of the three games. Basically, mission one for all three. That way, you guys can kind of get a taste of what you're looking at in terms of the Master Collection. Maybe some of you guys are on the verge of purchasing it, but just needed to see some gameplay or something like that. So I'm here to show you guys that gameplay as well as, you know, give you guys some feedback on what I think about the game and let you guys know if I think it's worth the money because... Again, it's going to come down to what expectations you had for the Master Collection. If you're expecting the same old game that you're used to with, you know, some slightly updated graphics and updated to 60 FPS, that's exactly what you are going to get. You're just not going to get any real updated graphics. So, um, again, some plus sides and some downsides. Ultimately, I do think it's worth the money just because Ninja Gaiden, this game, the original one, um, is so good. Even if this is the Sigma version and not the Black version, this game is excellent. And if you haven't played it before, now is the best time to jump into the series because you can play, you know, maybe not the best versions of each of the three games, but you can still play, uh, you know, really good versions of the game. Uh, just because it's not like a great version of the game doesn't mean it's not a good version of the game is what I'm saying. So um, regardless, again, if you haven't jumped into the series before, now is a great time to do so. You're actually really going to enjoy probably the first two games at least. The third game kind of gets a bad rap, but I still enjoy it just because it seems to be more gory than the other two. At least uh, the Sigma versions. For those of you that don't know, the Xbox 360 version of Ninja Gaiden 2 is extremely gory. Uh, that one's backwards compatible, so I may end up comparing that to the 
Sigma version of Ninja Gaiden 2, uh, just so we can kind of see the differences. But yeah, you're going to notice that this game is incredibly gory. However, they did update it to add some gore and decapitation. So sometimes you'll see a head slice off, things like that. But again, it's not nearly as gory as uh, Ninja Gaiden 2, the Xbox 360 version, nor Ninja Gaiden 3, Razor's Edge. Razor's Edge, uh, the third one, is definitely the goriest one. Now, I found this samurai right here, and he's missing his teeth or his mask. So I need to find that and try to return it to him. So it's pretty much what I'm doing right now. Um, besides that, you know, I'm just slicing up a bunch of enemies, things like that. It takes a little getting used to. These games are known for being incredibly difficult um, and having, you know, uh, really hard bosses. I do remember getting stuck on Ninja Gaiden 2 on a boss. I don't remember the name of him specifically, but I definitely would recognize him if I seen a picture of him. And yeah, that's a lot of the memories I have with Ninja Gaiden 2 is just being really frustrated and trying a boss battle probably a hundred different times. I do know for a fact that the boss is towards the end of the game, but yeah, sadly I never ended up beating Ninja Gaiden 2 due to that boss battle. So hopefully I'll get to go back and complete all three games now that the Master Collection is out. Because diving into the first, you know, 15 minutes of each of the games, I really started to enjoy Ninja Gaiden again and it really sparks my interest or renews my interest in possibly, you know, seeing a new Ninja Gaiden game. Hopefully they're releasing this trilogy to, you know, uh, hype everybody up for the brand new Ninja Gaiden game. Man, would that be a treat at E3 2021. Uh, but, you know, one can only hope. One can only hope. One of the coolest features in the new Master Collection is that you can play with multiple characters. You can play with Ayane, Momiji, Rachel, and Kasumi. So, you have a lot of different options in terms of replayability, playing with different characters, things like that. But to be honest, I'm yet to find the feature on how to switch or use different characters. Maybe they're not available in the first one. I'm not too sure about that stuff yet. But once I figure out how to play with different characters, uh, specifically all of the Dead or Alive girls, I'll try to upload some footage playing with each of those characters as well. At least if you guys are interested in watching that sort of stuff. If you guys are, let me know down in the comments below. You can definitely tell that this game inspired a lot of other games. You're definitely going to get like Devil May Cry vibes or Bayonetta vibes, things like that. If you love games like that, you're going to love Ninja Gaiden. Maybe most of you guys that are watching already are familiar with the franchise and that's why you're watching the video in the first place. But I know there's some people out there that maybe have never touched any of these games before and again are interested in maybe diving into them for the first time, being that you've heard so many great things about the series or the games. But yeah, even though I never fully completed the first, the second, nor the third game, I do really love the series. And again, now that the Master Collection is out, it really gives me a good excuse to go back to all three games and complete them. Now, if you're watching this and you're into achievements, I gotta say, these games do not have easy achievements. More than likely, you're going to have to complete each of the games on each of the difficulties, and not just the hardest difficulty either, but the difficulties that you unlock after completing the hardest difficulties. It's equivalent to a game, uh, like I mentioned earlier, Devil May Cry, uh, which is also really hard to get a full 1,000 gamer score in. So I wouldn't necessarily expect to get the full 3,000 gamer score in the collection or anything like that. But that is one of the plus sides, is that each of these games has its individual 1000 gamer score. It's not, you know, 1000G for all three games combined. It's 1000G per game for a total of 3000 gamer score. So, yeah, that's definitely one of the plus sides, is the fact that we get 3000 possible gamer score for the collection rather than just 1000G. But again, you're going to need to complete the game multiple times on the hardest difficulties. Not only that, but you're going to need to collect all of the uh, skulls, which is basically, uh, you know, collectibles. So you would need some sort of collectible guide. If I get real into the game, I may end up releasing collectible guides for all three games, not just the gameplay videos. But for now, I'm going to gauge your guys' interest in the series, and we're going to start off with these three gameplay videos. Now, I went ahead and I found that mask, and I returned it back to the samurai. After that, his hand opened up. And I got a key, which is going to unlock the door. I had actually went to this door a few minutes ago and it was locked. So I had to retrace my steps and go and give the samurai back his mask so that we can get the key. And now we need to head back towards that walkway or ramp where we can go ahead and 
uh, use the key to open up that door. But first, I'm going to save my game just in case I die because if you're not familiar with the first game, it does not have any type of autosave feature or anything like that. You just have those manual save spots. Here's that door I was talking about. We used the key of courage. Let's see what we have in here. Maybe a boss. Okay, we got locked in. Not a boss, but some more advanced enemies. They're wearing, like, white clothes, so maybe, you know, they're a little more powerful or have different moves compared to the other guys I was fighting. So, yeah, let's go ahead and wrap up my opinion in regards to what I think about the game, at least so far. I'm going to start off with saying I do think it's worth it, especially for three games that I consider classics. The game does offer a lot of nostalgia for me, so that's a plus side. Plus, it has 3,000 gamer score, and if you're an achievement hunter, you're definitely not complaining about that. Again, for you, it's ultimately going to come down to where your expectations were set for the Master Collection. Maybe you thought it was going to be a total reworking of all of the games, maybe like the Resident Evil uh, remake treatment, nothing like that. Again, this is basically just like a high quality port. The biggest advantages I'd have to say are the fact that you have 3,000 gamer score, so that's only going to matter to achievement hunters and platinum trophy hunters. For those that are playing on PlayStation, I also believe it has three platinum trophies. Aside from that, you have the obvious upgrades like 60 FPS as well as 4K resolution. So that's really going to help the game, you know, be a buttery smooth experience. Aside from that, in terms of the new features, I think the coolest new feature is the fact that they added, you know, four or five of the Dead or Alive girls. So you can play with characters like Kasumi, Ayane, Rachel, and then I think it's pronounced Momoji. I'm not too sure how to pronounce her name, but yeah, you get it. I think there's a total of four different DOA girls, plus you can obviously play as Hayabusa. So yeah, those are the plus sides with the Master Collection. Again, the fact that it's 4K 60 FPS, they added the additional characters that you could play as, which offer a lot of replayability, especially if you're going for the achievements, and maybe you don't want to play as Hayabusa, you know, four different playthroughs, you can kind of mix it up by trying some of the other characters, and again, we have the 3000 gamer score or three platinum trophies, so yeah, I think it's worth it, but maybe you don't enjoy games like this, or maybe, again, you were expecting a full-on remake or something like that, but getting three full-on remakes for the price of one game just isn't going to happen. Again, these are high-quality ports upgraded to 4K resolution and 60 frames per second. But if you're one of those achievement hunters that likes, you know, getting 100% in every game that you play, I gotta warn you, this is going to be a very difficult and very grindy uh, 1,000 gamer score, or if you complete all three games, 3,000 gamer score. So just keep an eye out for that just in case, you know, you like them full completions. Ah, the dragon sword. So your father is still in the sacred wilderness. Yes, he has entrusted me with the sword while he continues his training. He never seems satisfied with the power he wields. Someday you will come to understand the pursuit of power, perhaps beginning with your training here. And what of the sister blade, the dark dragon? Has he left you in charge of protecting it as well? It remains in the village under the protection of my father's clan. They will ensure that the sword remains untouched, its dark power sealed. It is a shame that such a sword must go untouched. Such power unused. Alas, I am not of the dragon lineage. The sword is not of my concern. Master Murai, the Hayabusa village. Mastered you. All right, guys, so that's going to complete the first mission in the game. About the first 15 minutes or so of it, again, this was running in 60 frames per second. Unfortunately, it wasn't captured in 4K. My capture card only captures up to 1080p, but it does capture 60 FPS. So hopefully you guys enjoyed how smooth the gameplay was. Other than that, make sure you guys keep an eye out for my gameplay footage of the other two games. 
And most importantly, if you want achievement guides related to the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. Other than that, I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of my Patreon subscribers. We just hit 16 patrons. I'd like to give a special shout out to everybody in the biggest fan club, including TimG84, AOJ, Kegger101, Michael Banksa, and Purple Rain 6. As always, I appreciate you guys tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe.